Great. Can everyone see that? Yep. Perfect. So the next thing I'm moving on to is creative attack structure, which I think is a little, maybe a little bit more exciting. Um, so we will jump in here. So the first thing I want us to do, and feel free to you know, speak out loud about this or just, just kind of watch and think, but is just what do we see in this attack? So I'll play a couple of times. Okay. So this is from, I think, the uh, Pro 12 final, uh, Pro 14 final a couple of years ago. Um, so I'll play that one last time. And then I'm just going to move on before uh, to the next slide. So I think it's important here that we kind of mark out what the goals of each phase are. So I was told, I, I actually had a really interesting um, uh, a coach at an old club when I was first started coaching and he was teaching us some um, strike moves off, off lying out. And he said that uh, it was just an offhand thing, but he said that the key is to, is just to get over the game line. It's a success if we get over the game line, which I think is really interesting because we put, we normally uh, set a very high standard of what we think is a successful um, you know, strike move or phase. But actually if we get over the game line, then, then that is successful. So I've drawn the, up these three goals, which I think are the first is to get over the game line. The second is to generate quick ball. And the third is to draw in more defenders than the attackers used. So if we do one of these three, and it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's the first one or the third one, but if we do one, then that's, that's fine. You know, that's, that's a positive phase. If we do two of these things, so if we get over the game line and we generate quick ball, then that's good. And if we manage to do all three of these, then that's a great phase. So that's, I think that's where we, we want to be, that if we, can do, if we can do one, fine, two, good, and three is great, then that's kind of sets us up. So if we jump back to this again, so now we've got those three things in mind. We've got the first one is, did we get over the game line? So we can see they've got the mark on the pitch. So we got over the game line. The second is, did we um, generate quick ball? So there's not really a breakdown here, but we do get the ball off to the next guy. So I say we generate a quick ball. Um, you know, instantly, there's actually anything he, he offloads and it, it gets turned over, but um, we, you know, we can just look at this part of it. And then the third one is, did we draw in more defenders and attackers? So you can see here that we have, we have two, in the, two tackling one man and then one tackling another. So we've had... Um, two attackers taken out and we have three defenders taken out of the game. So in this, if we jump back to what we had, did we get over the game line? Yes. Did we generate quick ball? Yes. And did we draw in more defenders than the attackers use? Yes. So we've, this is a, a great phase here because we've done all three, three of those things. And if you think about it, it's not that complicated. It's, it's fairly straightforward, but it's still what we would classify as great because we hit all those three. So if we have a look here now, so this is the same, the same move, um, but just clipped at one point. So one of the things I like to think about here is using active players. So how many players are active in this particular attack? So we have one, two, three. We have these three in, in the pod. Um, and so when I say active, it's, it's either a player who gets the ball or could get the ball. So we have this literally, but we could make this even better if we did this, which is move uh, Patchel, I think this is, from this position where he's not, really, he's not really influencing play, and then move him behind. So at this point, if he was in behind, then we now have four active players. So we've added one more active player, and we're potentially creating an issue for this defender here uh, on the outside who now has to watch the outside member of the pod and potentially also Paxel coming down the corner. So this is a great phase as we, just, as we decided, it's a great phase already, but it could be even better if we take uh, Paxel and put him into an active player role. So if we look at this one here, so this is a different game. I think this is last year. Um, so why does this pod cause problems? So, here we have th this setup. Now, the member, uh, a, 
a phase is successful if we have go over gain line, quick ball, and draw them more um, defenders and attackers. So here we get through over gain line easily and generate really quick ball, and we tying. Um, I think we tying three, and so we we actually this is not great. This is just good because I think we we have more attackers here than, than defenders. Um, but you know why would this? Why does this pod cause us problems? And I think there's a few things in here that uh, for, as to why it causes problems. So the first is the number of active players. So we have one active player who could get an inside pop. We have two active players. We have three active players. So this is the pod is this him, him, and then the leg scrum cup on the outside. But then we have we have this fourth man. Then we have I think this might be section at the back, and then we have another player. So we have uh, six active players um in here so already you know a lot more and we also have the outside pod member running at speed into this collision so he doesn't end up getting the ball but he does run at speed off the option which which puts glasgow on their heels um, and allows the ball carrier to get through so if we jump back to this still we see we have the the pod here and then we have this outside defender who because we've got a man in behind is now making a decision as to does he stay in does he go out and then this defender is about to be left really in no man's land because if he stays in then he's isolated and if he goes out then this is still a difficult defensive uh, position to be in and this is caused not entirely, but partly due to all the active players here. So again, we see much clearer here, we've got the, the three front and then the three in behind. So we've got the six active players, all who could get the ball at some point. So it really confuses the defence and adds a huge amount of pressure to them because all six of these players could be in line to get the ball. Okay, so... If we look now at how creative this attack is, I think this is from a few years ago now. This is maybe four or five years ago. Um, so this is Scotland. So I'll play that one again. So I think that's pretty quick. Okay. So if we're being honest, we would say this is probably not too creative. So this does not look like a particularly creative attack. You know, it's, it's not dissimilar to what we see uh at all the time but what adds to this creativity is again we have three plus a fourth active member then a fifth active player here so Finn Russell in behind doesn't get the ball but could get the ball and him his position influences everything else that we see so if we think if we just play this through we have a late arriving attacker coming at speed at the line and what this does is it creates this fracture in defense because you have the ball carrier and he's crucially carrying it in two hands, which is great. We'd love to see that because he could go out, could go in, or could carry. Um, and he's fixing one man. But then you have Finless at the back who is causing issues for all these outside players because what if the ball goes out the back? Then they have to be aware. So the number of active players here is causing lots of people problems and you can see actually that this defender here in the in the yellow boots and then i think this is pocock on the outside um they are in a position where they're unsure as to who is doing what so this player knows that there's this pod system and then this outside player there's unsure whether he should be cutting down the outside option or should he be up into fing face or should he be across and defending with this man and as we see, the outcome is nothing too special, apart from when we get over the game line, one, we generate quick ball, two. So we don't get the third thing. We don't commit more um, defenders and attackers. We, we take three um, attackers to, to one defender. Um, but still, we have a good phase here. Not a great phase, but we do have a good uh, attacking phase. And there's also upper there looking at the ball, not uh, square with uh, the rest of the line. So and the ball is already in the hands of Ali Price, ready to pass. So that is also interesting now. Exactly. For the work of the other players. 
exactly and yeah i totally agree so if we if we just come back a little bit so at this point he's looking down stephen moore is looking down um uh hooper or i i yeah i forget is looking backwards so as you say although we've actually only taken one completely out of the game we have three here who are not going to be effective for the next phase um okay so one of the things here that i think it's really important to think about is why do we attack like we do so there should be a reason for everything that we do um and that reason can't just be well it's what we've always done because sometimes you know tradition and, and things that we've always done are are useful and they're good because you know they work sometimes they they don't work but they're just traditional so um if we can't say well we attack like that because um it's successful or we attack like that because it creates more active players or because uh, it, it's to our strength if we just say oh I, we, we always do this then that's not a successful and that's not good enough reason and one of the things when i coach is i always think if a player asks me what is the purpose of this drill or what is the purpose of the the thing we do for the last 10 minutes if i can't give them the answer then we probably shouldn't have been doing it so the second thing here is how many people are actively involved in every phase. So how many people could get the ball at every single phase? If it's just one, then that's going to be really hard to do those three things. It's going to be hard to get over the game line. It's going to be hard to generate a quick ball. And it's going to be hard to commit more defenders than attackers. So if we have six people actively involved who could all get the ball, then it's going to be easier because the offense is going to be off balance. They're going to be... Um, having to tackle maybe two people and not know which one until the last moment um so if we have more active players it's, it's going to help us out and then how can we get people more actively involved so uh, if you coach at a really young level then what you want is you want people to get their hands on the ball as much as possible because you know, it's fun that's how they grow at an adult level it's the same still applies because you know as adults we're really just bigger children and we want to get our hands on the ball we want to play more we want to actually be involved and so this is a really good really good way of doing that yeah how do we get more people involved well we run an attack which has a lot of active participants and then this fourth thing i think maybe this is old news to people i haven't come across as much which is um we should do the opposite of what we want to see as defenders so when i'm defending what i want to see is someone who is has got the ball and i want to know who i'm tackling from a long way out so i don't want to make any last minute uh, split decisions i actually don't want to move much i want them to run at me so i can make that tackle um and uh, that's you know i don't want them to be very quick i want them to be slow coming at me um yeah what i really want is i want a pick and go where someone's told me it's going to be a pick and go and i've had five seconds to to decide that's what it's going to be and get in position. That's what I would really like to defend. So as, as attackers, we should be thinking, well, what don't they want to, want to defend? And what I don't want to defend is I don't want to have to move. I don't want to have to make late decisions. Um, I don't want to have to be lunging for the tackle. Uh, I don't want to have to be moving back and forth and getting tired. Um, so if we, do, if we attack to put defenders in those situations, then we're going to be much better off. Okay, so one of the things here, uh, and you know, I know it's a little bit difficult with, with, with language and stuff, but and feel free to, to just post in, in the chat, but uh, it'd be great just to know people's thoughts on what is there to like about this attack. So, uh, and I, it's, part of this is, a, uh, is almost a trick question, is that part of this is, um, you know, maybe you don't think the attack is very good, um, or maybe you think it's really good. And there's a few of these videos and I'm not really making a judgment call. I'm interested to know whether you guys think what, what there's to like about this and what there's to, to, to dislike. So this is from Gloucester this uh, last season. Okay, so I'm just going to play that one again. And just feel free to think of stuff that is good about this. Uh, so what is there to like about this? Okay, so any thoughts on this? And anyone see anything in this attack which they think, I like that, I want to I take that on board? 
I got a chat here. Yes. So yeah, Adrian, lots of decoy bungers. Oh, maybe I have to close that. Uh, yeah. So as Adrian says, lots of decoy bungers. So we have, if we count them, we have one, two, and then actually maybe three, uh, three decoy bungers across there. So yeah, totally agree. Uh, wait for ball early. Yeah, agree. So we get, if we think we, we start at least like on the five meter and Billy 12 trees is a, is tackled almost on the opposite, on the opposite side, 50 meter. So yeah, we get, we get a lot of early width uh, over there. Nice. Uh, does anyone else have anything good about this attack that they like? The work of the number eight with the ball uh, and singleton inside also a lot of option for the first um, um, player with the ball in the hand. Totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is really a kind of exciting way of dealing with this. And also, sorry, if if we also jump back, if we if we think what do we least like to defend? So if if I'm the nine here, then I'm thinking, well, is this a mall? Or is the eight going to lung at me? Or is the dummy lunger going to be the person I'm tackling on the outside? So this nine has, in the kind of the uh, five seconds of, of, of this clip, has ha gone through a decision of, OK, they're going to maul. OK, no, they're not. The eight's going to lung at me. OK, no, he's not. The outside guy is my man to tackle. So if I'm this nine, I'm not enjoying this because I've, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know who I'm tackling. And obviously, the end, you didn't have to make a tackle. The other thing, Adrian, like you said, the early width, a lot of that comes from having uh, Willie Hines, the nine, stood already so wide. So he gets the ball beyond the 50 metres. So when he makes the pass, two passes in, they're basically between the sticks. Um, so they managed to get the ball out really wide. Um, now, if you're either of these defenders, if you think here, he's off balance, so he's running this way, and he might have to defend the inside ball, he might have to defend the outside clash. He might have to defend the cavy. So in this situation, you see now he's thinking, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to tackle this guy. And then the ball's gone. So now this defender has had to defend the outside clash. Now he's having to defend um, the, the, the loop, but also maybe he has to defend this clash on the inside. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's, what, what he's doing at the moment. And so, as a as a defender, this attack is challenging us because it is making us um, uh, kind of question what, what it is that we're doing, and we have to answer a lot of questions. So yeah, great, and thank you for for kind of getting involved there, guys, with with the suggestions. The other thing to ask, oh, so there's one more chat. Exactly. So yeah, Adrian, great point. They didn't get over the game line, um, and in fact, what actually happens is. If we watch this, so this is on the 10 meter line. So we see loads of active lungers, loads of active members. But the problem is 12 trees and the whole attack just goes sideways. And they don't get over the gain line. They end up committing main to the breakdown. And they make this kind of fairly easy now because lung Irish can can compose, can can kind of stop. So the attack ultimately wasn't successful. Um, it did generate quick ball, I think. So we got one, so it was, it was fine. But it didn't get over the game line. It wasn't successful. So we would actually probably say this was not a great attack, although it had good elements to it. Okay, the problem was, though, that 12 trees just, just goes uh, laterally across the pitch and doesn't go forward. So if we move on to this one, so this is from Queens against uh, Long Island last year. So we do get over the game line here. Uh, this ends up actually the ball being lost. Um, but again, if we slow this down, we have you know, pretty early width. So by the second pass, we're in, in uh, between the two six. We also have confusion for the uh, defenders. So we have active players here. We've got Smith, who's looping round. We have these three as well. So just in this alone, we got five active uh, players. So then we have the nice switch, and then these two active players come in. But 
we also have the ball out the back. So again, we've now got four active players. We've got Smith with the ball, the two centers, or the ball out the back. And then we have that nice pass. Again, we've got, in this case, three active players. We've got the inside, the carrier, or the ball out wide. And then again, these players want to have um, a, you know, a second touch, which is crucial. So they've made the pass or they've been involved in dummy lungs. And then they want to go ahead and actually make a second touch of the ball. So if you watch uh, Marcus Smith here, he's actually in a position to make three touches. So he has one touch, two touches, passes, and then is on the inside to get potentially the third touch. So this is crucial. We want our players to, to be keeping on making a pass and then getting on there to make uh, the, the second or third touch. So we didn't play this like to the end. I think it ends up with a, uh, an offload that doesn't go to hand. But if we assume there's a tackle here, then we've at least got over the game line. So this is at least fine. We could end up with, with quick ball as well. But a crucial takeaway from this is that we had lots of active players and that caused issues for, for London Irish. Uh, any other thoughts on, on this one? Can you replay that, uh, Sam, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's interesting also the, the, um, the decision making, of course, Marcus Smith in that case, because he saw the guy, the defender closing and then opening again to go to, to tackle the guy, the number 13, Lasik, I think is. So that is something yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I've uh, let me just jump back. Uh, yeah, he's saying yeah. Smith really squared up to stop the defense from drifting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and unlike um, Billy Twelve Trees in that last one, you see that although it's a similar move, I mean it's not you know it's it's a loop which is similar to what Twelve Trees done. When Smith gets the ball back, instead of going out here towards the sideline, he cuts back in to go upfield. And so if 12 trees had, had done that on the last one, then we would have been talking about that a lot better. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, Jack. So, yeah, Smith, Smith squares up here to stop the defence from drifting. Completely agree. Um, so, yeah, so this is really nice. Similar to the, to the 12 trees one, we've got decoy dungers, we've got active players. Uh, it's better because he squares up, and that's kind of where the where the um, uh, the gain line success comes from. So we can boil this down to to really five five keys. So simplicity is key. So in a simple attack, we'll be able to replicate it time after time after time after time. Okay, if we make something really complicated, as we could say that Gloucester one was maybe overly complicated, um, then it will come under more pressure. So if we think about this, it's actually quite simple. We just go back to watch this one just one last time. So what is it? It's it's a loop, and then it's a clash ball. So that's pretty simple. I mean, you know, pretty much any side could could run this. Maybe not successfully, but they could run run this move. So simplicity is key. Then the more active players you have, the better. So a really good way of looking at this is let's say that you have a move where um, the ball goes to your tank. And the tang uh, runs a, um, uh, you have an over zungas lying outside. So you have a clash ball from your 13, or the 12 goes out the back and, and is there for the out the back pass. So that's fairly standard. We've got three active players in that. We've got the tang, we've got the clash ball, or we've got the ball out the back. But if we run our blind side winger on the inside, now we've got four active participants. And also, if the ball goes to a clash, he gets through then you've got a blindside winger on the shoulder and in that case you're not really taking a player away from anywhere you're getting a fourth active player really for no loss okay and you you could run the blindside winger on the inside of the ball at the back um you could run the uh, blindside winger um on the inside of the 10 you could run the blindside winger on the outside or inside of the clash ball so there's a huge amount of variation you can do it's still very simple there's a huge amount of variation you can do in that very simple move. But hanging, also you get that fourth um, active player. Um, so the players won't make the second touch. So when a player passes the ball, they should be then looking to how to get involved again in that phase. So pass, if we, and sorry, to play this again, 
we go back to this for 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 Smith, we have one, and then he's chasing, and now he's on, and now he's chasing again to get back on the ball. Okay, so he's going for those touches. He wants the ball time after time after time. So we want those players to get the second touch. Um, and then uh, if he's not there for the pass, then he'll be there for the breakdown to generate a quick ball. So a good attack goes forwards, so not sideways and certainly not backwards. And this is what we saw in that Gloucester game, is that attack was, was not good because it didn't end up going forwards. We went a long way sideways without actually going forwards. And then quick ball wins matches. So the quicker we can get that ball, the better we'll be because we'll be uh, going against unorganized defenses um, and we'll have more success because we won't be going against a set defense. So those five things are really simple. Um, now, a lot of those will be stuff you've already, you, know, you, you already know. Some of this is really obvious. The, the ghost going forwards is really obvious. Um, but the active players, I think, is, is if there's one takeaway, then hopefully that's, that's it, is how do you get more active players involved? So let's just review. So these last few are, uh, and so there's a chat here. Um, yeah, good question, Jack. So uh, I think, can you all see this chat, by the way, when I open it? Yeah. Mm, okay, cool. No, but well, the question is, do you think going out the back creates sideways attack to a point? Perfect. Yes. So uh, I, it can do. Um, the, the challenge is to make those players long a, um, well, in, in, in the UK, I guess we'd call it a banana line. So you run sideways and then you cut up field. So um, it's fine to run sideways. You, you can't really run a loop without going sideways, but you have to then cut up the field when you take the ball. So it, it can create sideways attack if you go out the back and, and just keep going sideways. Um, it's just a challenge as to, of to um, how to stop yourself from doing that. Um, we might actually have that in this clip. So, and there we go. But we can review this anyway. We'll come back to that, Jack, because I think there's some clips later where people are going out the back. But if we look at this, if we think about this, those principles, really simple. So we have a two man pod, we have one man out the back. And all that happens is he runs out to the side, fixing this man on the outside. He's got the tackler, uh, so he's got the ball carrier, and the, the eventual. Uh, the guy he passes to just goes straight for the hole. And this is created by having our three active players. So ball carrier, crash ball, and then the guy at the back. And he's just creating the distraction for this outside defender. So in the end, it's really simple. And then our 15 now wants to make the second touch. So he wants to be, uh, he's be involved as an, as an active player, but not got the ball. And now he wants to be involved as an active player and does get the ball. Okay, so really nice bit of attacking play here and created just as much from this i mean it's not even particularly aggressive but just kind of a little outside lung that just draws the outside defenders onto him and makes them lose this gap so he is an active player he doesn't get the ball but he's an active player um and in this case he's a crucial part of this attack because he he pulls away um this hole so really nice bit of play from lassing who obviously a yeah, one of the best attacking teams uh, out there. So if we jump on to the next one, so this is uh, Bristol. So here is a good, uh, I guess, answer to your question here, Jack, about um, does it create sideways play? So if we go back and look at this, we have Shiji at the back. Um, we have... Um, uh Lutua with the ball yeah Vu on the outside uh Lutua and then Langjandra and he goes so there's a few really nice bits about this but the first one here is, is Shiji you know I think it's an interesting point here Jack because he's he's obviously facing outwards but what he does it really well is when he gets the ball he does lung forwards so although he's facing always facing out he is lunging forwards um so He's not running that 12 trees, you know, long sideways loop. He is running forwards before he does this. Um, and then that, that creates a silly nice try. But we also have uh, Vui, who is, you know, if we look at this, active player, active player, active player, active player. So in theory, Vui could play the ball out the back to 
to uh, Langdrangler there, so it, he is an active player. Um, and then we got the second touches, so active player, slows, and now he's there to make that second touch. He doesn't end up getting the ball, but he's still there in a position to, 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 uh, you know, to, to make a change on the play. The other thing I think is really nice about this is we're all familiar with this pattern. It's, it's the overs unders line. We have uh, Lua 2 with the ball, Vui then in the uh, unders line, and then uh, Shigi then in the overs line. But what's the learning ice, if we just put it back just a microsecond, is see how late Lua 2 leaves this. So he puts it in a, he passes the ball in a p position where we don't know whether he's going to pass it to Vui or Shigi. So if you're the defender, if we jump back to that, what do I want to defend? Well, the answer is not this, because I if I'm him, I don't know if I'm defending Vui. I don't know if Lua 2 is going to dummy and keep going. I don't know if Shigi's going to try and bung on this outside and I'm going to have to um, go over and cover them. Uh, and I don't, certainly don't know if it, the ball's going to end up with England Jungle's hands. So as a defender, I want to be set and I want to know exactly who's going at me. But in this situation, it could be one of three or four people that I end up tackling. better but there's no reason why any team any level couldn't run this exact uh play yeah that this is this is very simple um it's just about getting it as active players in the position to influence the defense even when they don't have the ball so if we move on to this one back to gloucester so we got a scrum So in this, we've got two Leicester players down, two Gloucester players, or three, so three Gloucester players involved, potentially also we've got another one here who's out of the game. Um, we've got over the game line and we've generated a quick ball. So this would be, by our classification, a, a great phase. It's also incredibly simple. So there's a, but there's what we might call window dressing on this. So all it ends up being is it's, it's just a clash ball. But you see here we have active player active player, active player, active player. So we've got four active players in the backfield. Plus, we've got Willie Hines who could run down the middle anyway. So we've got five active players in this one position. And as the uh, Leicester fly half, I don't know whether I'm staying on the inside to tackle Hines. I don't know whether the ball is going to go to 12 trees, who's then going to go out the back to these two who may be looping down. So if I'm stood here looking at this, I'm not sure what, what it is that I'm, that I'm actually seeing. So then Heinz carries the ball just long enough to create this situation. Now in this situation, we have exactly the same thing. So Heinz could in fairly go straight across the face of 12 trees to the outside player, could go behind to one of either of these two. And we don't know at this point whether this is going to be a, a tight attack or the wide attack. Um, and even something like this guy could run now a blindside uh, run and we could be facing a, a blindside attack. So we don't know at this point what's happening. And if you think that this is at 10 seconds, and if we think when 12 trees makes contact, which is here, that 11.2 seconds. So there's 1.2 seconds between us not knowing where on the picture ball's going to actually 12 trees making contact. Now, obviously the tackle's quite poor, but this is all a symptom of just having to make this late tackle. So you don't know who it is who you're tackling. Uh, and this is what challenges 12 trees in this case. Uh, so this is what challenges less in this case. And then you've got the players there to get the quick ball to go again. So this would be a great phase because we've hit all three of those targets. And then this is the last one. So this is San Diego, Colorado. So this is from the MLR uh, last season, or maybe the season before last issue. So we have San Diego from the scrum in their own half. And then that's the try. So again, if we run through this. So we actually, we only have three active players here. You know, so we're not overloading this. Um, there's not really an inside option. It would be, maybe it would be nice if we had an inside uh, wing option or if we had the nine potentially offering himself. It, you know, it, it's 
it, it, it ends up not really matching, but it's useful, I think, when you watch the beat, now that we're kind of more familiar with the uh, active players option, of just knowing, well, how can we get more active players in? So potentially something they could have looked at. Um, but here, again, if we're thinking, well, how do I want to attack? Oh, sorry, what do I want to defend? I want to defend people who I, I want to uh, tackle, someone who I know is going to get the ball. In this situation, if I'm this guy, I don't know who's getting the ball. So it could be one of these two. It could be even an outside option. There's a lot of distance I've got to cover on my outside. And all that ends up happening is he comes out because he doesn't know what it is that he's covering. It's not a great defensive call because he's actually just kind of created a dog leg. If not, you know, real reason here, there's, there's kind of not an immediate uh, threat that he's covering. But that, what I also really like, and this is maybe a little bit in the weeds, um, but is uh, Nyong'o just drifts off the ball. So he doesn't really, um, he doesn't kind of run outwards. If you think, if you look at this, he gets the ball and doesn't move outwards, but he's created that space by drifting before he gets the ball. So if we look where he is here, he's, this is where the ball's in hand. So here he is on the pitch. And then that's where he collects the ball. So he's drifted probably a meter, two meters, just when the ball's in the air just to get on the outside and that creates the issue because you know we have this blitzing uh to finger so yeah again like i said that's in, a little bit in the weeds but those kind of nuances can really help um make your attack better so and then he goes through and then we have those second touches so the 10 wants to make the second touch the six who was involved in the scrum wants to make a second touch the outside players who haven't been involved yet want to make that want to get on the ball so here well, he doesn't need them in the end but he has four players who all want to get on the ball uh, and two of those who've basically had a touch already. So I just play this one last time. But it's a really nice, it's a really nice try. It's very simple. Um, and you've got that follow-up. You've got those second touches. It's, it's really nice. And I think that that is it. So we have two minutes left. I think maybe one question I could, <laughs> I could answer if anyone has, has any questions. Uh, there's a one in the chat. Would you say set piece players plan strike or more? Um, so I would like, good question, Jack. Uh, I would like um, for my, uh, my teams to, to generally play strike moves off set pieces. I think it's useful to know exactly what you're doing. If you think about it, uh, if, I don't know if anyone plays golf, but one of the things in golf is uh, 18 times in a round, you get to use a tee peg and you get to create the perfect lie for yourself. And that's a similar thing to a set piece. In how many time, how many set pieces and scrums you get, you get to do exactly what you want to do and exactly what you practice. So I think you should be running, um, you know, strike moves or at least moves off um, off set pieces. And that may just be a uh, a clash ball. It may just be a ten uh, going, yeah, you know, taking the ball and going. But I think people need to be aware of what that is, so you can then be in a position to um, to secure the ball. But yeah, great question. Well, um, <laughs> talk about this strike attack that you see. Which, which are the leading teams about this striking attack? This or just people in motion, in your opinion? Yeah, I think Bristol do a great job of of creating people, um, putting people into into positions where they could get the ball. Um, I think Harlequins do a really good job of doing that as well. I think one of the things that they tend to attack off is a fairly set um uh, a fairly set position which is that they have um uh they have five attackers in basically a kind of two at the front two at the back and one in the middle and they attack off that a lot but it creates a huge amount of options so they could they could pop they could go in behind they could carry um and then they have two of those of that so i think both queens and bristol do a really really good job of of creating those those players in motion and the other one uh, um for example i see a lot during this weekend for example the the pro d2 for example yeah. and also top 14 they are really great to create quick quick balls uh, sometimes also just sticking out the the arm sometimes we don't see so much but in yeah. sometimes they are so good to create quick lighting ball uh, to, and fast attack to go wide. That is something really interesting. What do you think yeah, about it? You see in France, some of that different from the premiership, maybe? 
Yeah, I think the the key is that you need your bulk guy to stay alive when he's hit the deck. So, the, you know, you could if you could get two men over to secure the ball, you'll get you'll get quick ball. But you'll get lightning quick ball if your tackle player works hard to get the ball back as far as possible. You'll, you know, when you see people do that really well, you see Lux where there's no attacking players in. There's a, a tackle player and a nine, and that's it because the ball's back. It's out of harm's way. It can be played quickly. So I think the the work is equal parts support players as it is ball carrier. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think actually game checking again. I think Queens do a really good job of this. If you look at the the amount of ball they create, that's that's lightning quick. It's actually I know he's left, but it's actually something that uh, Calix looked at and and also Yasek uh, Waluch, who you, you should follow on Twitter, he's very good. But um, he looked at the lightning quick ball that that Harlequins generate, and it's it's incredible. It's you know it's forty percent of all of their looks are completed in less than three seconds. So that is you know half ball carrier, half support player. But I do think we have to focus on the uh, on the ball carrier because too often, especially at lower levels, we get tackled, we lay on the floor, and then we hope that someone clears that over us. Whereas actually what we should be doing is working, going backwards, moving our body, placing it. Um, and so I think that's that's crucial. Great. And the last question, <laughs> does exist boring rugby for you, in your opinion? <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. I mean... I think there's so I, I like a certain type of rugby. I quite like you know free flowing to an extent. Um, to be honest, though, I, I think one of the team, a team like Argentina, for example, at their worst, move the ball very quickly left and right, but don't go forward. And I think that can be quite boring. Argentina at their best, move the ball quickly and go forward, and and that looks really nice. And I think that's exciting rugby, but. Um, Someone just picking going, you know, Georgia, for example, I think when they play, I, I, I don't think that's boring. I think it's, it's you know, sometimes successful. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a style of, of play. Um, obviously, we all prefer a particular style. We all have a way of playing rugby that we'd like teams to play. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's boring if, it's, if teams don't adhere to that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sam. So, guys, if you have other questions, because I can <laughs> keep asking st really interesting stuff, think about the, the role of the fly half, of who is the fly half in that moment, too. It's really important the understanding around the, the, the breakdown area in attacking and in defense. But I think it's also, Sam, what you said about <laughs> what is the, the worst scenario for a defender, no? And 40% yep. of the um, Quick ball for, for the attack for Alleguins was yeah. uh, <laughs> was crucial and was really bad for all the other defending. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's useful sometimes just to write down what it is that I would hate to defend because if you if you write that down, you'll you'll come up with maybe twenty or, or you know fifteen twenty things where you think I I would hate to defend all that. And if you know that, then you can you can make changes and you can try and attack to focus on those things that you would hate to defend. Okay, guys, time to go dinner for somebody, for lunch, yeah. as we said. So, Sam, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much to for having me. We talk together on uh, YouTube, so the other people that ask for the meeting today, they can watch it again, reply. So, thank you again, and see you for Perfect. who wants tomorrow, because tomorrow night we're going to talk about... Um, relationship something really hard too and uh, thank you for your time sam for your perfect thank you guys yeah my uh, pleasure take care have a good night guys and for see you guys see you tomorrow bye, bye everyone yeah.